Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to family worship. Today, I am anointed in this time and this hour to bring forth a word unto you that's going to touch you. For the ones that are standing before me and to the ones that's watching and listening, the Lord has placed something in my heart to share with you and something that will touch all of us because there's something that we're all dealing with. In the mighty name of Jesus. We've been talking about trusting in the Lord. We've been sharing about trust. We've been sharing about who the Lord is. And now we're going to an aspect that's very touchy. Because many people have a misconception on what it means or what is concerning the heart. Trust in the Lord, coming from Proverbs 3 and, 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with your whole heart. And many have a misconception on what is concerning the heart, what the heart is, or what in details the heart. But in dealing with the heart, the Lord has shared with me that how can we follow first without trusting? How can we follow without trusting, without trusting in the Lord and dealing with the whole heart how can a king of his home how can a king expect his home to follow him if he is not following the Lord how can a king expect anyone in his household to obey rules and regulations if the king don't bow down and obey the father? Rules and regulations. How can a minister or preacher, how can I expect anyone to follow me through Christ if I myself is not surrendering and obeying Christ himself. Christ is the chief shepherd, and we are the under shepherds. Where am I going? Where a king is going outside of Christ? Where a pastor, minister, teacher, preacher, evangelist, where are we going outside of obeying Christ? We ain't going nowhere. But I understand why that there is some issues and trusting why there's some issues in obeying, why there's some issues in following. We have heart issues. We have heart issues. We have heart issues. We really have heart issues. Others will follow people that's designated for you. For you, for me, will follow and obey when you follow and obey the Lord. How can I expect my wife and my home to follow what we have set in place for the home if I myself is not following what the Lord has given me to do? It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Let's turn to Matthew. 16. I only have two chapters today, two scriptures to read today. Matthew 16. We 
we we we walking around with heart issues. We're walking around with trust issues. And we're still in the series of trusting the Lord with your whole heart. We, we, we're stopping right now at the heart. We're stopping right now at the heart. And in dealing with the heart, I come to an understanding the heart is the gate or the entrance to your spirit man and also to your fleshly man. It's the entrance to your spirit man and also the entrance to your fleshly man. We're going to see what we're talking about. Let's start at verse 16 and verse 5. Now when his disciples had come to the other side and they had forgotten to take bread, Verse 6, then Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. They reasoned among themselves because they believed that they didn't take any bread. So Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You see... Christ was on one wave of understanding and talking, and disciples was on another understanding. But Jesus said unto him, unto them, excuse me, but Jesus said, Beware of it, said to them, O ye of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Why are you reasoning among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Someone is reasoning within themselves because they have lack of something. But look what Jesus says about that. Verse 9. Do you not yet understand or do you remember The five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up? So Jesus said, do you remember the five loaves and the two fishes which I fed the five thousand and you still had baskets when it was finished? That's more than enough. That's more than enough. You see, we have issues of the heart because we look at the thing that we don't have more than our supplier. Our supplier. He said, do you remember the 5,000 that we fed and the loaves and how many baskets we took up after we fed them? But just in case you forgot about that, verse 10, nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets did we take up? So two different scenarios where their supplies, not just their supplies, but the people's supply of being fed happened on more than one occasion. So as Jesus told the disciples, why do you reason within yourselves? Why do you have these heart issues amongst yourself because of something that you don't have right now? But have not you forgotten that I've supplied in the past? I've supplied your needs in the past. Have you forgotten that I met your needs in the past? Have you forgotten when, 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 when you felt like it was no answer? No, no way that that need was going to be met on your resources or in your resources? Have you forgot that I came through on your behalf? 
Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten that I am the Lord that shall, shall supply all of your needs? And I bless the Lord because you are standing right now. You are here right now because what we thought could have brought us down, it didn't bring us down because we're standing right here, right now. We're standing right here, right now. Verse 11, how is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not tell he was he did not tell them beware of the leaven of bread, but beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And I say this. That verse still stands today. Beware of man's doctrine. Beware of man's doctrine. Beware of what man say out of their mouth and what they believe out of their mouth and that there is nothing to back it up. Beware. Beware of man's doctrine that it's not permissive for women to come to church with pants. Beware of man's doctrine that they have to wear the prayer cloth every hour of the day. Beware of man's doctrine that we are New Testament saints and that we are free from any legalism of man. Christ came to bring grace and truth to the Lord, and therefore, we walk in the newness of Christ. We talk in the newness of Christ. So beware. That's why you gotta study for yourself. Bible's very clear. Woe unto the shepherd that scattered the sheep. Even when they fall stop you. Very careful. 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus asked the disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he switched it up and said to them, the disciples, but who do you say that I am? So the question is to you today, who do you say Christ is? Who do you say Christ is? You know, people don't acknowledge who Christ is. I'm talking about people who faithfully, religiously go to church. They don't acknowledge who Christ is. They don't acknowledge who Christ is. He asked disciples, whom do you say that I am? Who do you say Christ is to you? Who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to you? Who, who is Christ to you? Who do men say? Who do I? Who do you say that I am? Only one bold one said, verse 16. Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, there's a confession that comes out of the mouth, but that confession starts in the heart. Romans 10 and 9. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth and believe in your heart, if thou wilt confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, it's the heart thing. It's, it's, it's the heart thing. It's the heart issues that, that we have that prevents us from confessing certain things. We got issues going on in there that cause us not to even trust. You see, I have learned there's two people that you cannot lie to. There's two people in the whole world that you cannot lie to. It's yourself and it's God. You see, I can fake the funk in front of you. I can quote all in front of you, but when I get behind closed doors, when I get behind closed doors and I'm saying contrary to what I believe, it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. You see, at one point, brother, I was doing that. I was faking the funk to be strong in front of people. Like I had it all together. But in reality, behind closed doors, I did not have it all together. In front of people, I was confessing something, confessing the word, and then behind closed doors, I wasn't believing in my heart what I was actually confessing in front of people. I wasn't, conf I wasn't believing in my heart what I was confessing in front of people. And Jesus said and asked him a question, who do you say that I am? And Peter said that, I, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, hell, shall not prevail against it and I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever ye bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven will be loosed in heaven you notice what came first before Jesus spoke into Peter? Confession first. Confession that he is the Christ, the, live, the son of the living God. And after confession, revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, Peter, but my Father, which is in heaven, and upon, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We have issues of the heart that where we confess Christ to be Lord over here, 
but not Lord over there. And we have heart issues and we put Christ in areas where we, we want him to be in, but not have the whole heart or being king over the whole heart of our lives. It's just like when company come to the home. If the house ain't all clean, what you do? You close the doors. You close certain doors. And they ain't going in there. But you make sure the bathroom is clean. You make sure the living room is clean and the kitchen. Everything else, they don't need to be seeing right now. So we let Christ in the kitchen because, you know, we let him in the, the living room. We let him in the bathroom. But we don't let him into the other secret places of our heart. And you wonder why there's cycles of life that you keep experiencing because there's no change, because there's no word, there's no Christ that you allow him in that place to change. So, so in other areas, we have trust issues. We have trust issues because we, we prevent Christ from coming to that closed door. What did what he say? I stand at the door knocking. If any man, if any man, I stand at the door knocking. So we prevent Christ from ruling over our heart in totality. And this is lies the trust issue. To put it in simple form, your relationship with one another is a reflection of your relationship with the Father. Let alone your attitude is the aroma of your heart. Your attitude is the aroma of your heart. When things start to come up, like I told a, a young man the other day, you know when you did not forgive, when you think about that thing and certain feelings and certain things come up in your heart. You know that there's still some unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, uncleanness in your heart. Yo, we say we trust God in one way and then, yo, we just flip the script. And don't trust God in another way. The man of God said the other day, one day we all excited about the word. And then the next day, what happened? What happened? We all discouraged, bent out of shape. I want to give up, start crying. What happened? There's no stability because there's issues in the heart. We're going to get there. It's issues in the heart. So look what happens. Revelation came. He even gave the keys and said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 20, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he is Jesus the Christ. It wasn't time yet. Verse 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples again another step of revelation. He began to show his disciples that he must go through Jerusalem, Jerusalem to suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. He he revealed to them what he must go through. He revealed to them steps that he had to go through to fulfill God's will in the earth. I love it because Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Right after The baptism of Christ. 
The Holy Spirit descended as a dove on him. He was led to be tempted. Why? Before ministry, before ministry, there's a level of place that you gotta put down the flesh and the thinking before full operation of ministry be bestowed in you or manifested in you. Jesus was led to be tempted. Why? Because he knew, the Lord knew that he had to put down the flesh. Ah, turn this stone into bread. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Every aspect that came, Jesus conquered it with what? The word. It is written. So this lets me know that the heart issues that we have, there's only one way to fix it. There's only one way to trust. There's only one way to, to, to get from unclean to clean. That is his word. It's only one way. There is no other way to clean your heart. Thank you, Lord. There is no other way. Thy word sanctifies. God's word sanctifies and, and purifies you and I. There's only one way to clean your heart. So many Christians and many unbeliever believers are walking around with dirty hearts, unclean hearts. I tell you, the heart is the entrance to your spirit man and to your fleshly man. Which way are you going to lead your heart into? Which way are you going to lead your heart into? Now look what happens. So look what he said. He said, Jesus revealed to him the things that he has to go to and to be killed, verse 21, the latter part, and be killed and be raised on the third day. Look what Peter did. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. He began to rebuke Jesus. He just was showed revelation. He just was showed that flesh and blood will not, that will have not revealed this unto you, but it was my Father, which is in heaven, that I've given you the keys. He just revealed an unbelievable revelation. And yet Jesus tells him the will of the Father, I must go through this. And yet Peter stops him, put him to the side and say, no, Lord. Look what he's saying. Peter put him to the side, began to rebuke him. And said, far, far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Look what your heart says to the Lord according to his will. For as it be, Lord, this will not happen. And that's where lies unbelief. Because we say in our heart, no, Lord, this will not happen. And the Lord says, I am not. I'm not a liar. I'm not a God that I should lie. Neither son of man that needs to repent. God cannot lie. He just came out the series. God cannot lie. But in your dirty heart, you tell the Lord you are a liar because as far as it be, Lord, this cannot happen unto you. I have been anointed to give this word. I have been anointed to give this word. That we confess with our mouth one thing and our heart says something different. Your attitude and the aroma. You can say you forgive me all you want to, but eventually you don't forgive me, your attitude will show up and let me know that you really don't forgive me. You can't get away from your attitude. That's who you are until you get cleaned up. Look what it says. He said, this what shall not happen unto you. Now you tell him, you just confess that he is the, the son of the living God. Peter just confessed 
You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But yet, this shall not be, this shall not happen to you. You're telling the living God that this ain't going to happen to you, but it's the Father's will. That this shall happen. Because if he didn't do this, where will we be? <laughs> and if he didn't fulfill the will, where will you and I be? The wages of sin is death. That's where we, death, constant apart from God. That's what death is, apart from God, spiritually. Apart from God, away from God. That's why Christ had to come to be the bridge from us to God. Without that bridge, it's impossible. Without that bridge, it's impossible. Look what Jesus tell Peter. Look what he tell Peter. He said, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, who? Satan. You are an offense to me. Now he wasn't talking about Peter, Peter. He was talking about the prevention of doing God's will. Satan's agenda is to prevent God's will by any means necessary. Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. You are an enmity against God. The flesh is enmity against God. It's an offense. So look what he said. For you are not mindful of the things of God. Uh-oh. So Satan is not mindful of the things of God. That's why Peter was rebuked. You stopping the will of the Father. Satan is not mindful of the things of God. Look what it says. You're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Oh. So Satan mastered man. He mastered man. How? Pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. There lies issues of the heart. There lies issues of the heart. Get thee behind me, Satan. You're an offense. You don't know. You're not mindful of the things of God. But you are mindful of the things of man. Why did Matthew 4 and 4 take place? Mm -hmm. He ain't mindful of the things of God. Mm. You had to pick up something. Satan mastered man. Therefore, he mastered how to keep unforgiveness in your heart. He mastered how to keep bitterness and resentment. He mastered how to lead you into the flesh, for you could always stay carnal minded. Mm -hmm. He mastered that. He mastered. And in dealing with the matters of the heart, the issues of the heart, God wants us, it is his desire that we be clean and free. So he brings revelations of the issues of the heart. Now it's upon you that when the word of the Lord comes, it's you have to take it. You have to grab it. You have to meditate on it. And you have to change it, your life, through that word. We are stuck in certain issues because we are prideful in our hearts. See, pride don't look one way. Pride has many faces that's hidden under the dust. Pride is hidden under the dust. Under the chairs is, is hidden. Pride is hidden. And this is why we are not changing as a whole. We are not changing because to one way or degree, we are prideful in our heart issues. 
and we refuse to put light into the dark areas of our heart, which is his word. Verse 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Do you see that? Look at the responsibility. If anyone desires to follow me, Christ said, let him deny himself. Denying yourself is the opposite of pride. Humility. Denying yourself is the opposite of pride. Denying yourself is allowing God to come in. He said, I, I give grace to the humble and resist of the proud. Deny yourself. Put God's word in your heart and change will come. What he says, let him deny himself Take up his own cross. It's clear. Take up his cross and follow me. There's a cross you and I have. There's some things got, that got to be nailed on the cross. <laughs> There's some things that you got to put. Yo, those issues, are, yo, those are issues that you got to nail. Deny yourself. Put the issues on the cross. And what he said? Follow me. What? The whole weight of the world was upon Christ. To die for our sins. He did. He did his part. He fulfilled it. He laid the burdens of the world, the sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God. The government was upon him. He fulfilled what he had to. Fulfilled what he had to. But there's a responsibility that we have. 25, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Verse 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Surely I say unto you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Issues of the heart. Issues of the heart. That we don't want to take responsibility. You know why? We like to hide in being a victim. Some people feel good being a victim. You get the little sympathy. Que oh. lastima. Bendito. We, 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 we feel good because we get some tension. So we like being a victim. We like getting, being sick. That's how people stay sick. They like being sick because of the attention. They get the flowers, the balloons. We like being a victim. And in being a victim, there's no responsibility for change. So we're still hurting for no reason. We still got dirtiness in our heart for what reason? The Lord is shedding light on our hearts today. Mark 7. Mark chapter 7. Once you heard, you are responsible. Once you heard the word of the Lord concerning that thing, you are held responsible. And that lies the problem. 
We don't want to be responsible. Mm -hmm. See, now I'm a now I have to change because now I'm responsible. I'm held responsible now because I heard I heard truth, I heard clarity, I heard direction, I heard how to come out of the thing. So now what's your excuse? How many times the Lord will have to come to send a word over the same issue? How many times? Mark chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 5. Everyone have it? Then the Pharisee and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? And Jesus answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? Hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh. How many people honor the Lord with their lips, but their heart is far from them, far from the Lord? How do you know, preacher? I know by your words. I know by your lifestyle. I know by your service unto the Lord. You're up one day, you're down the next. You tell me, when God is ever wishy-washy with you. You share with me, when is God ever up and down with you? You share with me, when is God ever faithful and then not faithful? Please share with me. You cannot. Because the Lord remains the same. He is the God yesterday, today, and even forevermore. He said, I change not. Verse 7, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Beware of the doctrine. For a for laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the traditions of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. And he said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. How many people reject the commandments and the word of God for tradition's sake? Why change has not come? Deliverance has not come. You reject the word of God and keep the rather than keeping the traditions, you reject the word of God rather than change and use the word of God because you want to keep traditions. How many people are not changing because they only see God through this way? How many people are rejecting God's word because they only think that he can come one way? Keeping the same tradition. They think God's going to come no other way except wearing black and white every Sunday. <laughs> they rather reject the commandments of God for their own tradition. For 10, for Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But Jesus said, but I say, to, I, but you, excuse me, but you say, verse 11, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corbin, that is a gift from God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother. 13, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition. Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition. 
which you have handed down, and many such things you do. How many places would rather reside in tradition rather than using God's commandments, His Word? How many places in actuality, in actuality reject change and growth? Reject change and growth by staying in their tradition. I always say this, that revisit the contract that you have with God. Because if he called me in 89, to do something, he may be calling me in 2016 to be doing something else. Every so often, whether it be a contract with the city, whether it be a contract between two people, it's only for a certain amount of time because every so often things change and a contract has to be renewed. For could it be what the Lord has called you to do in 89, could it be different today? But in our heart, we so filled, filled with all this extra stuff, we can't see change and the concept of God coming another way and sharing with me. What is the contract that he has for me to do right now in this season and in this time? Verse 14, and when he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me everyone and understand. Hear me everyone and understand. Hear me, everyone, and understand. When you put the Lord as what you need him to be, he will be that very thing. You need the Lord to guide you. You put him as a guide, as the director as the chief cornerstone, as the chief shepherd, he will be as such as you believe him to be in your heart. I need him to be a deliverer. I put him as my deliverer. I quote and I declare scriptures of him being my deliverer, and so shall he be, according to his word. You need extraordinary strategies? He will be the extraordinary strategist. You need wisdom? He is a spirit of wisdom that gives the word of wisdom. You need knowledge? He is a spirit of knowledge that gives the word of knowledge. Which you set him as to be, according to the word, that's what he is. He who comes to God must first believe that he is. And whatever you need from the Lord right now, in this moment and in this season, set your heart to believe him as such and watch him be. Watch him be. Watch him be. And he calls everyone to hear. He said, hear me everyone and understand. Verse 15, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. Well, look at the heart. Look at the heart. Look at the heart. Verse 16, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. 
when he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said unto them, Are you thus, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter, look what it says, because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. It does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all fools. Verse 20, and he said, what comes out of a man that defiles a, what comes out of a man that defiles a man? So what comes out of you defiles you. As stated earlier, your attitude is the aroma of your heart. What comes out of you is what defiles you. What comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your heart, come out of you defiles you. By my words, I am justified, and by my words, I am condemned. I let you know who I am by what you hear me say out of my mouth, by my lifestyle. Am I saying two different things? Am I saying one thing and living another? You'll know who I am because what's in the heart is going to come out. It's going to come out. You can put it down for a little while. You can try to hide it for a little while. But eventually, what's in your heart, it got to come out. And it's going to come out. Verse 21. These three verses and I'm closing. For from within. Look what it says. For from within. Out of the heart of men. Look what it says. From within. Out of the heart of men. Proceed what? Evil thoughts. Out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. Thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Verse 23, all these evil things come from within and defile man. Today, God is dealing with the heart. The heart wants to change. He wants to change. The heart, the Lord wants to enter into those areas that you do not allow him into. Change. Freedom, deliverance, elevation do not come by me keep doing the same thing, expecting something different. That is the definition of insanity. You wonder why. There's cycles of things that keep resonating in the heart, that keep resonating in your life. There's certain cycles I saw that kept coming up and kept coming up, and I had to change, I had to, excuse me, I had to look into my heart and ask the question, why is these things keep coming up in my heart? And the answer is, the answer is I have not let the light, the word in those areas for change. For change. I have not let the word of God enter into that place.
to bring light, to shed light, to sanctify, to clean out, to, to, to gut out. For change. There's certain things that keeps coming up and keeps coming up. I'm saying, look, why do these things keep resonating? That's because at certain times that in the illustration, that certain doors are closed. I only let him in here and here and here and not let him in there. To bring about change. It's the issues of the heart that the Lord wants to deal with. It's the issues of the heart that if we're not careful, look at the things that comes out that defiles us in our heart. These are the things that prohibits growth. These are the things that prohibit, prohibit manifestation of the Father from working in our lives. These are the things that stops us from flying as wings as an eagle. These are the things that stuns us. I shared with a gentleman a couple weeks ago. My, my home, my job, the ministry, where are these things going? if I have unforgiveness in my heart. How can I expect God to bless over my stuff that I give him and my heart is full of dirt? Resentment, unforgiving. How can I expect God to bless over unforgiveness? How we expect God to do certain things when we are hovering certain things in our hearts. Warning comes before destruction. And I say that because He gives us opportunities to deal with issues, He gives us opportunity to deal with heart issues. But like earlier, at times we walk in pridefulness. And pride don't have one way, one face to look at or as it's look. Pride come in many faces. And we say we ain't prideful. But you can look over your life, look over your heart. And the Lord showed you that you may need to do this or change in this, and that there is no change on your behalf. What's stopping you from changing? What's stopping you from declaring and decreeing every day? Why do we, or why are we up one day and down the next day? Why are we not even across the board? Why we're not even across the board, meaning that we, regardless of what's happening, we stay in the course. Regardless of what's happening, we're still quoting this word and believing. Regardless of what's happening, and not excited about, as the man of God said before, not excited about God's word, and then the next day, it's a whole flip. I'm going to God as a little baby again. And a lot of times, we, we don't verbally say but in our heart, we think it. As Peter tried to rebuke Jesus, and he said, Lord, this ain't going to happen to you. And Jesus said, get you behind me, Satan. You don't know the things of, of, you're not mindful of things of God, but you're mindful of things of man. That the enemy has mastered the flesh. And like I said earlier, that your heart is the entrance to your spirit man, 
and it's the entrance to your flesh. But the Bible says, be not God is not mocked, be not deceived. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also be. That if you and your heart choose to go and think of the flesh and go the fleshly way, that is your result, it's corruption. But if you lead and put God's word into your heart, it will lead into the spirit man. But a lot of times the result, the will, our will, and our result, our actions, mm -hmm. is only because we chose the, the, to go the fleshly route in our heart. That's why we wind up yelling at each other. That's why we wind up acting out the flesh, because we chose to go that route. You choose to go that route. You choose to go that route. But you can also choose to go the spiritual route. And we reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. I acted out the flesh. Why? Because I chose to go the route of the flesh. And not chose to go the route of God's word, which leads to my inner man that discerns the things of God. And that's why the flesh is enmity against God because they don't understand the things of God. And the flesh wants you to act out in the flesh. Ain't that something? That the enemy will lead you to, to, to your flesh and then when the punishment comes, he leaves you and you all deal with the punishment all by yourself. I'm closing. How can we expect for anybody to follow us if we ourselves are not following the Lord? Meaning, how can we expect a level of obedience if we are not obedient to the Lord ourselves? The Lord is dealing with our hearts today. Shedding light on the heart. Because out of the heart flows the issues of life. And last but not least, in Proverbs, it says, guard your heart. 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 Because if you don't guard your heart, it will lead you to a place where you really don't want to be. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you that it's the matter of the heart, Lord, that you shed in light by your word on the things that's in our heart, Lord, the things that we may say that we forgive, but we really don't. For yes, Lord, the attitude, our attitudes is the aroma of our heart. Lord, you have anointed me to, to speak of your heart, Lord, to speak of the heart, to shed some things of the heart, Lord, that prevents us from, from experiencing and moving in your full manifestation, Lord. Lord, have us to be responsible and to take responsibility to change the things that's in our heart by your word. For Jesus said, if any man follow me, he must deny himself and take up his cross. It is our responsibility, Lord, to put your word in our hearts, to shed light and to clean our heart from any uncleanness, from any unforgiveness, from any bitterness, resentment, anger, frustration, hatred. All these things that we may have in our heart, Lord, for must a man examine his own self? Yes. So that we may be made in the image of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for shining your word in our lives. Thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. That you will never leave us nor forsake us or give up on us. Thank you for meeting us right where we are to bring a change and to bring 
a word of hope and deliverance to free us from any bondage, to deliver us, to set us free from any captivity that we may have within our heart from moving forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Those of you that's watching, I dare you to check your heart. This is not a hooping and hollering message. But this is a message of really dealing with matters of the heart. It's not about the hooping and hollering. If that's how you learn, I understand. But the matter of the heart is a real issue because the Lord is desiring change right now in our very hearts. This is a serious issue. This is why you may, you may not have a relationship with anybody. You may not have any friends. Why? Because it's a possibility that there's some issues that's still going on in your heart right now that's preventing you from even moving forward and knowing and experiencing Christ in his full totality. So I urge you today, I urge you today, check your heart. Check your heart and see if there's any Thing that's in your heart that don't align up with the word of God you have to change I am no different than you I have to align up my my heart with the word of God and there's several changes that took place and there's several changes that still need to take place but I do understand there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus and I thank him for loving you and loving me so much that he thought it not robbery to give us this word about the matters of the heart. He desires change for you and he desires change for me. Are you walking in insanity? You keep doing the same thing, expecting new results. How long are you going to walk in that thing with no new results? How long are you going to be by yourself, isolated, with no change? How long are you going to walk in the darkness of your heart before light comes? How long are you going to walk in those unclean things in your heart? Because you might have touched something. You might have thought something. You might have hovered something in your heart that caused you to be unclean or even unforgiven. But the Lord desires for you to change right now. For the hour is here. For you to change right now. Let the Lord come into your life. Let him come into your life right now. And say, Lord, I examine myself through your word. And I know that it is your word who sanctifies. And I know it is your word that brings light and cleanse my heart from any evil speaking. From any evil thoughts. From any adultery. From any fornication from any anger and rage, from any blasphemy, any, any pride and foolishness. Lord, I look at your word to cleanse me and to purify me that I may now walk into the image of Jesus the Christ who came into this earth to be the light of the world, who died for me. And by the shedding of his blood, I now have a relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. That if it had not been for his blood, we will not be redeemed. So Lord, we trust you. We trust you and we trust your word that you will help me deal with the matters of the heart. For out of the heart flows issues of life. And therefore, Lord, I will no longer choose to go the fleshly route, but I choose to use your word to go through the end of man that I may discern the things of the spirit. And I thank you in Jesus name. Thank you for tuning in to myfamilyworships.com. Go to the website and browse and look at the many archive sermons that's on there that will change your life. And if you have any prayer requests that you may have, you can go to the website and there's a prayer request button. Click on it 
and send us your prayer request. If it's private, you can click on private and it'll, it'll just go straight to me. And we'll pray for you. But remember that Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Be blessed till next time.